Well, every time we think we can move on to the next project, there's something that is urgently needs to be done. So, yes, I'm gonna work on replacing the sump pump because it stopped working. It's still running, but it's not pumping. So, I got a replacement one. My barber will fix this one in case I need it later, but we will just see how it goes. didn't realize when I bought this new sump pump that it has a different outlet inch and a quarter instead of inch and a half so I don't have the right adapter or the right pipe so guys <clears throat> it's time to go and buy a few parts so we can connect this again so just like always an extra trip especially with plumbing projects I seem to always have to make an extra one or two trips every time I do anything. It's just frustrating that the sta there's no uh, simple standard that everybody follows. Everybody just does it however they want to. So it's really frustrating. But I guess just go to the store, buy a few pieces, and then we can have the sump pump back up. Um, <clears throat> one of the things about Virginia here is you can tell fall is coming or fall is happening at the moment is if there is a lot of rain. Um, here it seems like in Central Virginia we have at least every week one or two major rainstorms in the beginning of the fall and then also in the spring one more time. So we are just in this phase and that reminds us we just have to get going with our roof. We really wanna get that fixed so that we don't get any water damage over um, the end of the fall and uh, winter again. So I'm glad the sump pump is fixed, which means it keeps the basement somewhat dry. We only have issues when it rains really hard and the ground was already wet from before. So we will obviously fix that from the outside eventually. We'll have to excavate the outside um, above our house and waterproof it from the outside and we won't have any long-term water issues anymore. So we can actually use the basement. Right now, obviously the basement is not um, permanently usable because of the water issues but with the sump pump at least this should keep it dry enough that we can store um, our old trim and old wood down here without it getting damaged. Since we have a lot of new people watching the channel I'm gonna give you guys a little introduction of what um, we are about, what we're doing here and why we're doing it. Well um, my name is Emmanuel, uh, my wife's uh, name is Julie, we have also two kids and we live in Virginia. We have purchased this house um, a year and a half, two years ago. We fell in love with it. It is a beautiful old Victorian and we want to put it back uh, together in its old form of glory. Obviously, we are changing the layout a little bit on the inside. We put it, changing a little bit of features, but that's really just to make it a little bit more modern so that we can actually live there and have all the luxuries that you know a 21st century house has. Uh, so obviously, we um, 
an old Victorian didn't have a laundry room, um, really didn't have a kitchen um, the way we have it with running water, electricity and all those kind of things. So we obviously adding those things. Rooms were a lot smaller often, so we are changing in that first floor at least, having our dining room and kitchen combined. So we have a little bit of a bigger space. We can actually use the space together so that we can enjoy having breakfast together while we are still uh, maybe getting things ready in the morning. And But otherwise we are gonna keep all the old woodwork. Uh, we had to take a lot of the old plaster out because it is really just um, very deteriorated. It's crumbly, falling apart. And we found a lot of mold. So we had to just really gut this place uh, we saved and um, saved all the old moldings, all the old wood that we had. Some of the rooms unfortunately didn't have it, but the majority of rooms still had a lot of the moldings. So we are keeping that. We're gonna fix it all up and reuse it afterwards. And um, so how big is the house? The big house is actually uh, over 4,000 square foot, um, 370. Um, square meters for those people in Europe and um, you, who use metric system. Um, it is obviously a massive project, but it is, we are just crazy. Um, really, that's what it comes down to. We fell in love with the house and we said we wanted to do this ourselves. We didn't want to just hire people and um, just have it all be done within a few months. And we wanted to do it ourselves. We love the house. We want to do it the way we like it, the way we want it. Uh, means certain things we obviously do differently than other people, but that's just because it's our house. We want to live here. This is not a fix and flip. Um, this is a house that we want to grow as a family up together. Um, our kids will hopefully enjoy um, for a very long time Christmases and holidays together down here um, at the house. So that's really who we are, why we do this. Um, it's obviously a massive project. We are not professional contractors, but um, I have done construction in the past, but we are handy enough and we said this is a project that we can do. Um, obviously it's a massive project, it's gonna take us a really long time, um, but this is really just a hobby and we want our friends, family to just be able to come along and that's why reason why we put it on YouTube so that our friends um, who come from other states or obviously you can tell I have an accent um, our friends in Europe as I'm originally from there from Austria um, that they can just follow us along and see kind of what we're doing on a day-to-day -day basis um, we obviously have a full-time job so we are just doing this on the weekends some people have been wondering why we are taking down all the trees in the entire section um, around our house. Well, we're actually not taking down a lot of trees that um, have been here for a long time. This is all really just trees that have grown here in the last couple of years as nobody has been taking care of um, this side of the house. Um, there is all this shrub growing, little saplings coming up wherever they wanted to and uh, blackbird bushes and things like that. And we, we are taking them down mainly, the, the first reason is so that the roofers have access to the roof to put up a scaffolding on the side of the building. Um, they obviously uh, would charge us a lot of money for taking on the shrubs down. Um, and so we said we're going to do it ourselves so that they can have a stable ground to put, put, it, put the scaffolding up, of course. Um, but then the other reason is you can see here a lot of the outer, outer shell um, the last layer of brick on the outside um, is starting to deteriorate. The, the grout is deteriorating. We obviously have to repoint all of, a lot of that stuff. And um, we have water intrusion. Um, I think I'm showing it here in the video beforehand, um, the issue that we had with the sump pump. So we have water intrusion around the building. So one of the things we also have to do is just dig the entire perimeter of the house up and waterproof it from the outside. Um, at that point, obviously, we'll repoint the brick that needs repointing um, and fix it, fixing it all, waterproof it, and then close it all back up. We'll probably tear this area back here um, so that we can actually make a usable area. we we'll probably make a nice big area for a garden up here in the front um, side of the building. And then back here, we might put two more tiers. So one layer down here for maybe an extended garden and then further down the building um, just giving us more space uh, below the building and we'll probably fill up a lot of that 
the lower section you can tell at our neighbor's property is much higher so we'll want to fill it up a little bit too bring in more fill material and have it all at the same level as the neighbor just to give us a little bit better use of the ground on all sides of the building One of the most fascinating things, in my opinion, at the, about those old houses is that they did the staircases completely different than I would have imagined them to do those. Um, they actually finished the entire room. You can see here we have the lath still left. There's still some plaster behind this um, trim board that is going up on the side of the, of the stairs. And they actually finished plastering the entire room before they even started with the stairs. So this plaster and lath here doesn't stop behind the trim. It actually goes underneath the framing of the stairs. So that was a continuous wall of plaster before they started framing up the, uh, the staircase and then obviously did the finishing touch and, uh, touches. So one of the hardest things therefore is obviously since we want to refinish this, we want to insulate behind there. We need to take at least somewhat that lath, some of that plaster out and refinish it afterwards. And obviously all the insulation out of here. So big task for next week, just to get this all cleaned out. I'll give you guys another detail from below where you can actually see that they put the framing right on top of the plaster. So we are right below where I was just sitting and you can tell here's the stair trim, the, uh, the stair, um, treads um, they're coming down with the riser and everything so you can see here this part here this 2x4 that they had here that plaster is right behind it um, the 2x4 is where everything is resting on um, from the entire stairs so you can see they've plastered this entire room and then they framed up with rough framing the landing and then um, or actually all the different landings and then they connected them all with um, with with all the stairs so plaster was behind here we obviously are gonna try to take out most of that stuff obviously wherever it holds it um, they obviously mounted it through the plaster into the wall but we are 
trying to make it so that we actually can refinish it afterwards. Obviously a shorter video again this week, but with Halloween going on and um, Julie still being sick, the kid's still a little bit uh, sick still, um, we didn't really get a lot of time to spend here. Um, goal is obviously for this week and next week to just continue cleaning. We have still a lot of old insulation in some of the areas, I'll show you guys here in a second, um, that we still have to take out, especially around the, uh, the staircase. <laughs> And um, most likely what I'll have is I'll have some helpers next week to take that big load that we got ready last, uh, last time we were here and um, take it to the landfill and then just clean the house. Um, there's so much stuff to do. So I'll just see what we can film, but um, most likely next week is gonna be no building, no nothing, just cleaning the house getting it all ready for actually doing the electrical, doing um, some of those finishing touches before um, we work on the outside. I know windows are next and um, siding we have to do. Um, we have to schedule the roofers. Um, have sent a couple emails back and forth um, with them already, trying to figure out details exactly. As soon as I have all of that stuff, we will obviously reveal it and um, share exactly what we're doing. Um, we're still evaluating a, f a couple option but um, we will obviously share when we get there. Well, thanks, um, enjoy your week and have a great rest of your time and I'll see you guys next time we turn on the camera. Bye.